Hi, I'm Katie, and welcome to Hearts Content Farmhouse, where every week I share with you a new video tutorial on bread baking, canning, and other simple living projects. Today, what we are making is cinnamon raisin sourdough bread. This is a really simple sourdough bread that is kneaded almost like a yeast bread in the mixer or by hand or in your bread machine. And then we are going to add raisins, roll it up into a cinnamon swirl loaf, and it is perfect for breakfast, for toast, French toast, anything like that. This is a recipe that can be started one day um, and then left in the fridge overnight to rise and bake in the morning for something that's simple and almost ready to go when you first wake up. And it is really great for beginners because if you're familiar with regular bread baking, the process is really similar to that. We're going to um, knead the dough, rise it, shape it, let it rise again, and then bake just like your classic traditional yeast recipe. Um, the only thing is this is a much longer process because we're not using any yeast, we're just using our sourdough starter. So with that in mind, we have to make sure that the starter we're using today is really active, recently fed, bubbly, something that has doubled in size after feeding. If yours seems a little bit sluggish, I'd recommend that you discard some of it and give it an extra feeding because this is a rich dough and we really need a strong and active starter to get that fluffy and light texture that we're looking for. So our ingredients are three quarters of a cup of active starter, three cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, a quarter cup of softened butter. It really doesn't matter if you use salted or unsalted. I use unsalted, but it's not gonna make a big difference either way. Half a cup plus one tablespoon of milk, one egg, and then later we're gonna add half a cup of raisins and we're gonna need cinnamon sugar for filling. And we're also gonna brush the top of the loaf with a beaten egg. So our first step is to just go ahead and mix all of our ingredients for the dough, except for the salt, into a large mixing bowl. Now, if you're gonna knead this by um, hand, I would just put it in any old mixing bowl. If you're gonna use your stand mixer, go ahead and put it in the metal bowl that you're gonna use to knead. If you're doing it in the bread machine, I would do a separate mixing bowl and then later transfer that into the bread machine bucket. The purpose of this step is just to let everything kind of come together, let the flour start to hydrate, and it actually makes it easier to knead the dough later on when it's had this beginning resting step. So we're going to cover this bowl of ingredients um, with just a clean towel and let it rest at room temperature for about 30 minutes. Meanwhile, we need to soak the raisins. Uh, the reason you have to soak raisins when you're making raisin bread is because since they're a dehydrated fruit, if you put them into a wet dough, they're going to try and suck the moisture out of that dough and they're going to leave dry spots in it. So we have to rehydrate them and then we can mix them in without worrying about them sucking moisture out of our bread dough. So you can use just warm water. Some people like to use a flavoring for hydrating them. So they'll do vanilla or you could try bourbon or even something like orange extract. I always just use water, but if you want to do a flavor, that's totally fine and I thought it would be delicious. So now we're going to um, put the dough ingredients. I'm going to do the stand mixer just because um, it's easy to kind of show the process in that. When I make this, I actually typically put it in my bread machine because it's just easier to let it knead for me and I can walk away. Um, but I'm going to do a mixer today to show you. So put the um, ingredients in. It's going to look really dry and really shaggy, but as the butter gets incorporated into the dough, it is going to smooth out. So we're going to put it in, set it on low, and just keep an eye on it because at this first stage, we need to make sure the consistency of the dough is right. So what we're looking for is something that clears the bowl. We don't want it to be sticky. Um, but we also want to make sure that there's enough moisture so that it's coming together and forming a ball and we're not getting like little dry bits here and there. We really want an actual ball to form. So give it a few minutes and then check the consistency. If it seems off, you'll want to add just a teaspoon or tablespoon more of milk or flour, depending on whether it's too wet or too dry. And make sure you add the salt when you um, begin this mixing process. So once the consistency looks right, we are going to go ahead and knead it. So at this point, if it was a bread machine, I would just close my lid um, and have it on a dough cycle and just walk away and let the machine do the work. For the stand mixer, it's going to be a little bit more hands-on time, but still not too bad. So I'm going to let the machine knead it on low for five minutes. And then I'm just going to check and see if it has reached the window pane stage. Um, and this typically takes about two more sessions of this, so about 15 minutes total of kneading in the mixer, but I do let it rest five minutes in between. So once the dough is ready, I'm gonna add the raisins. So you just drain them, pat them dry, put them in, and let them mix in the machine. It should only take a minute or two. And then this dough is ready. 
So it's going to do its first rise, which is just a bulk rise in a clean, lightly oiled bowl. You just use the same bowl and wash it out. Put it back in and cover it with a damp towel or with plastic wrap. And this is going to go in a warm place to rise. Now, um, I always put mine in the oven. I turn it on for just about a minute and then turn it off and then put the dough in there to rise. You can also try right in the windowsill if you have um, sun streaming into your kitchen. Another thing you can do is get a proofing box. I don't have one, but they're supposed to work really well for proofing dough. Um, if you've started this in the evening and you've realized that, okay, this has to rise for three to four hours and you want to wait up that long, you can always just cover it really tightly and put it in the fridge. It will turn kind of hard and cold in the fridge, but in, and it won't really rise much, but in the morning when you take it out and put it back on the counter, it'll soften and it'll start to rise and kind of just pick up where it left off. So since there are two long rises for this recipe, at some point you might want to do that just because the day is going to be getting long. So once the dough has doubled in size or nearly doubled in size, it's time to go ahead and shape it. So we're just going to turn it out onto the counter and we need to stretch it out into a long, tall rectangle. So you're going to use your loaf pan as your guide for stretching out your rectangle. Um, you want the short side of your loaf to line up with your loaf pan. And the longer you stretch this rectangle out, the more vertical height it has, the more swirls you're going to get when you roll it up. So I don't really care about this. I just go with mine is just like a really simple, basic looking spiral. But if you want it to look really fancy and really pretty, go ahead and stretch it out really up to 40 50 or 50 inches long. And then you're going to be able to tightly roll it and have really pretty swirls. If you do it this way, you are going to want to increase the amount of cinnamon sugar. Um, now, I don't put an egg wash or melted butter or anything like that to keep the cinnamon sugar on the dough. I find that I actually get worse gaps when I do something like that than if I just leave it plain. But if that is your preferred way of making cinnamon bread, that will work here too. So I'm just sprinkling on the cinnamon sugar. This is half a cup of just plain white sugar mixed with a tablespoon of cinnamon. Um, again, if you want to do this with extra swirls, you're going to want to double this amount. So now to roll it up, you just remember the saying, shoulders in, head down. So tuck in the corners of your dough, tuck down the top, and then roll carefully and tightly. And then pinch the seams around your loaf, flip it over so that it seams side down, and then place it into a greased loaf pan. At the point it has to rise a second time. So you want to cover this with grease plastic wrap and put it either in a warm place for three hours, um, out on the counter for it would probably take six to eight hours at room temperature, um, or again you can put it in the fridge and come back to it in the morning. So what we're looking for at this next stage is for the loaf to be one inch over the top of the loaf and that's how you know it has risen enough and you're going to get a good texture in your loaf. Once it's there, go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 and then brush the top with um, an egg wash. I just do a whole beaten egg and brush it on top. And then we're going to bake this loaf for about 45 minutes in that 350 degree oven. It's going to look really golden brown because of the egg wash. So don't let that deceive you. Sometimes it will appear to be very done, but the inside is not fully cooked. It's always best if you can check the temperature inside your loaf. What you're looking for is at least 200 degrees. So once that is done, take it out, take it out of the loaf pan, and you really want to let this cool completely before you slice it if you want to get nice, neat slices. If you don't care too much about that, just let it cool for a little bit and go ahead and eat it. This will keep a couple days just at room temperature, wrapped up tightly. If you want to keep it beyond that, what I would recommend you do is slice it neatly and then put it in a bag with it already sliced. And then what you can do is just pop out slices from the freezer as you need them and put it directly um, into the toaster from frozen. Um, I'm going to put all the, um, I'm going to put the full recipe in the description box and I'm going to include volume 
and weight measurements, whichever one you prefer should be down there for you. And I'll also leave a link to where you can print the recipe out and keep it. Um, I hope you like it. It really is simple. And even though it's a long process, it is a good beginner recipe because it is so much like baking with the yeast bread. If you aren't really comfortable yet with sourdough, this might be a good one to get you started. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please just let me know. And I hope you have a good day. Bye.